In the last class, as we have seen that, I have explained about the problem of personal identity and uh, how there are many scientists as well as philosophers have explained the problem of personal identity. And the problem of personal identity is one of the important problem in the philosophy of mind. And without proper understanding of personal understanding, it is very difficult to know what exactly the main problem of mind. And uh, today, I am going to explain about the concept of persons, especially a, a non-materialistic view of person, special relations to Strassen's concept of persons. How Strassen explains the concept of person is different from Williams, Locke and many other materialistic philosopher. The concept of person is one of the most important concept in the philosophy of mind. The present thesis M is to outline and explain the non-materialistic theory of, of the mind and persons. And here the fundamental question is, what is a person and what is its nature? It was Descartes who has proposed a theory of mind and for him that a person is not just a material body, but also a thinking self. Therefore, according to Descartes, a person is a self, a self-conscious mind which thinks feels, desires and so on. The materialists have however rejected the Cartesian theory of persons and have argued that persons are just material bodies, though they are complex material systems with some sort of mental properties. It is wrong to say that mind is the brain or mind has only physical properties. Our brain has a particular size shape and special locations. In virtue of these qualities, our brain has a particular look. We can say that our brain can be variously experienced. The qualities of such experience are related in some way to the material object. But if this is so, where do we situate the qualitative of experience? There are many neuroscientists, they may say that all these are neural activities. Now, the question is, where are they? The answer is that they are located in your mind. This implies that the mind is distinct from the body. The problem of this essay is to question are persons material bodies? The materialists have argued that persons are material bodies, although very complex material bodies. The main aim of this section is to show that persons are not merely material entity and we have to show that a person is non-material entities. Firstly, we have to see now what is person. In this sections, that is to say that we have to examine the nature of person from a non-materialistic point of view. Before analyzing this concept of persons, we have to raise a few questions like what is persons, what is the nature of a person and so on. These questions are fundamental questions in the philosophy of mind. In fact, uh, the word persons refer to English word person is alleged to have a derived from the Latin persona, which was the mask worn by actors in dramatic performance. Neither in common sense uses nor in philosophy has there have been a univocal concept of persons. In common sense uses, persons refer to a any human beings in a general way. The person is distinct from a thing or a material object. It is general stands for a living conscious human beings. But Strassen's definitions of person is different from Williams. Because as we know, Strassen says that mind is something, it has some kind of personal properties to which both the predicate, P predicate and M predicate is applicable that I will be explaining in these lectures. But according to William, William's body criteria is the primary criteria to explain the persons. Strasson defines that a person as a type of entity such that both predicate ascribing state of consciousness and predicate ascribing corporeal characteristics, a physical situation etcetera are equally applicable to a single individual of that single type. Thus, for Strassen, 
persons are unique individual who have both mental and physical act. Thus, persons are neither purely physical body nor are they are pure spiritual substance. However, from Sturson's view of person is purely non-material, whereas William's view of persons is purely material, which opposes Sturson's view. This is because William claim is that bodily continuity is a necessary condition for personal identity. Because according to Williams, it is body which identifies the persons, but not the mind and there is no mind at all. Therefore, bodily criteria identify the persons. Thus, it is clear that Strasson would certainly rejected the contention that mental attributes are reducible to physical attributes, because Strasson admit that the concept of persons is non-material. But here the question arises, does Strasson's wish to say that persons are bodies of a certain sort, namely bodies which have mental attributes as only? Strasson's holds that persons have bodily attributes too, but unlike ordinary bodies, persons are things which have mental attributes as well. According to Strasson, it is essential to persons that they are entities which necessarily have mental and bodily attribute. In addition, those mental things are essentially different from physical things. They are different types of substance, persons are radically different material bodies. Strassen's theory looks like dualistic in holding that there are two different types of substance, the physical bodies and the persons. Again, these physical bodies necessarily have only one dimensions that is a physical dimensions. Persons necessarily have two dimensions, a physical and a mental dimensions. Persons thus have a dual nature. Now, we may have to look at the relationship between the knowledge a person has of himself and the knowledge of that of others of him. There are general three views on the personal identity. Firstly, if the unity of a person is necessarily connected with the continuance of his body through time, then it is impossible for a person to survive the death of his body. Secondly, if bodily identity is necessarily criteria of personal identity, then it could not be shown that some non-physical characteristics of a person continues after his bodily death. On the other hand, if bodily identity is not a necessary criteria of the personal identity, person's bodily death is merely one major event in a person's history and not the end of his life. Finally, if the fundamental criteria of identity were memory, it would follow that a person might be known to have survived death because he continued to have memories in his disembodied state. The most important fact about the person is the self. The self is sometimes used to mean the whole series of a person's inner mental state and sometimes the spiritual substance to which they belong. The self does not refer to the body, but to the mental history of the persons. This made the unity problem seems intractable, because when the mental images like feelings and the like are contrasted with the temporal persistence. In Strasson sense, a person is a thing which necessarily has both mental and physical aspects. The person is primarily the subject of mental experience. In the person theory, we cannot say that a person is a body but we can say that a person is in part a body. If a person is a body, then it cannot be conscious mind. One of the important question is, can we even say that a person has a body? Strasson would say that, but what would it mean about the theory of persons? It means that persons have bodily attributes. Another question is, does it say anything about the relationship between 
a person and a body. The body necessarily has bodily attributes and has nothing to do with a person's attributes, but Strassen's view is that persons have both bodily and mental attributes. We recognize all human beings as persons. This is because we generally do not make a distinction between person and human beings, but we can hardly contemplate the coexistence of biological very different persons inhabiting other planets who are not human beings like us. The concept of person is in some way an inalienable part of our conceptual scheme. In our conceptual scheme, persons and human beings coincide. Like uh, Joseph Margulis in his book on persons and minds mentioned that persons are the particulars that have minds and nervous systems, sensations and brain processes, but this will not quite do you know to explain the personal identity. A nervous system is not a person, nor is a psyche a person, it is at once the subject of both neurological and psychological predicates. In other words, it is both nervous systems and a psychic entity. Persons are not meriological complex entities nor kind, each of which contains parts a non-physical basic subject and a purely corporeal object to which this subject is in some way attached. For such a claim would not allow us to ascribe psychological attributes or corporeal attributes to the persons as a whole. It is because persons are more than their bodies and that they are not reducible to any kind of body gross or subtle. The person substance as described above is not taken to exclude the material properties as such. They only exclude the fact that persons are material bodies and nothing else. Persons are autonomous so far as their description in terms of bodies and mind is concerned. But it is not that no reference to body and minds is to be retained at all. Thus, persons describes have the attributes reference to the body and mind. From the above discussion, we can reiterate the Cartesian distinction between the mind and the body. They are opposed to the each other because the, mind, the essence of mind is thinking and the essence of body is extensions which I have already explained in the some of the lectures. And that is to say that the body is something special which is perishable. The mind of a person is something non-special. After death, the body only remains. This concept of the body becomes grossly explicit when we refer to it as the remains. However, it is this conception of the body which comes closest to the found in the person's theory. In this theory, we find that the body is not a person, nor is a part of the person. It is the person, it is insofar as he is thought of as the subject of bodily attributes, but it becomes a reality at a death. We call it a corpse. Therefore, one of the paradoxical implications of the person theory is that the body which a person has cannot be conceived of as a physical object subject to the laws of physical world. As we know from this theory that persons are conscious. Finally, from the above examinations, we came to know that a person's body is not a physical thing. Therefore, it is very difficult to identify persons with physical uh, body. Now, you have to see how the person's mind and consciousness uh, goes together and what is the relationship between person, mind and consciousness. As we have argued so far as person is an entity which has both mental and physical attributes. We could say of a person that he is 5 feet tall and weight 100 kilogram and many other things, but more Im importantly we could say that 
ही इज ए थिंकिंग अबाउट हिज फ्रेंड्स फील्स ए पैंग ऑफ हैप्पीनेस और इज सैड और सो ऑन वी मे देर फॉर से दैट पर्सन हैज ए माइंड हुई इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम हिज बॉडी बिकॉज द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कॉन्सियसनेस डज नॉट मीन ए बॉडी ऑफ ए सर्टन शर्ट बट इट स्टिल माइट टर्न आउट दैट व्हाट एवर इज ए सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कॉन्सियसनेस इज आइडेंटिकल विथ ए बॉडी ऑफ सर्टन शर्ट स्टेशन रिजेक्ट द व्यू दैट द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ ऑफ ए स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्सियसनेस इज होली इमेटेरियल नॉन फिजिकल ए थिंग टू हुई नथिंग बट ए स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्सियसनेस कैन बी एस्क्राइब्ड अकॉर्डिंग टू हिम कॉन्सियसनेस इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल टू फिजिकल थिंग्स नॉट टू प्योरली इमेटेरियल सब्सटांस इज एप्लीकेबल टू पर्सनस बट ए फंडामेटाल क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज कन्सीयसनेस जेनेली कन्सीयसनेस इज डेस्क्राइब्ड एज समथिंग हुई डिस्टिंग मैन फ्रम ए गुड डील अफ द वर्ल्ड एराउंड ओनली ए पर्सन पजिस दिस कन्सीयसनेस हुई इज नट बाय अदर मेटेरियल अब्जेक्ट एगेन द क्वेश्चन आर एज एस दैट व्हाट इज दिस कन्सीयसनेस हुई इज ए पर्सन सर्टनली हाज बट रक्स एंड अदर एनिमेट्स बींग्स डू नट हाव आ जी मुर् रईट्स द मोमेंट वी ट्राए टू फिक्स अवर आटेनसन अपन कन्सीयसनेस एंड टू सी व्हाट डिस्टिंगली इट इज इट सीम्स टू भेनिश इट सीम्स आज इफ वी हाड बिफोर अस आज मियर एमटीनेस व्वेन वी ट्राए टू इंट्रोस्पेक्ट द सेंसेशन ऑफ ब्लू ऑल वी कैन सी इज द ब्लू द अदर एलिमेंट्स इज आज आज इफ इट यू आर डायफान वी नो परफेक्टली वेल दैट वी आर कन्सीयस अफ थिंग्स एराउंड अस इनक्लूडिंग अदर पीपुल बट वी डू नट ग्राफ कन्सीयस इट से हाई वर इट इज दिस कमन फिचर कन्सीयसनेस हुई मे बी सेट टू बी द सेट्राल एलिमेंट इन द कन्सेप्ट अफ माइंड इफ वी आर आस्क टू गिव ए जेनेल क्यारेक्टराइजेसन अफ द ब्रांच अफ फिलोसफी कर्ड फिलोसफी अफ माइंड वी माइट से दैट इट इज दैट ब्रांच पर्टिकुला कन्सर्ण विथ द नेचर अफ कन्सीयसनेस विल कल दे मेन्टाल फेनोमेना टू ह्वि ओनली बींग्स कैपेबल अफ कन्सीयसनेस आर सब्जेक्ट मेन्टाल फेनोमेना आर सच आज वेज अफ बींग्स कन्सीयस दैट इज हिअरिंग इमेजिनिंग एंड मेनी अदर मेन्टाल कैपासीटीज पर्सन इज ए माइंडेड बींग एंड हाव द कैपासीटी अफ डुईंग द मेन्टाल आक्टिविटीज सच आक्टिविटीज इनक्लूड थिंकिंग विलिंग फिलिंग अंडरस्टांडिंग स्पीकिंग कम्युनिकेटिंग एंड एवव अल रिमेम्बरिंग द पास्ट मेन्टाल आक्टिविटीज आर सच दैट दे प्रिसपोजेस दैट दैर इज ए थिंकिंग हू इज कैपेबल अफ दिज आक्टिविटीज द थिंकिंग इज हियर ए सब्जेक्ट और आई हू इज और हाज द कैपासीटी अफ कन्सीयसनेस Wherever we will find the concept of I, we will find the existence of consciousness because it is person who is conscious of consciousness. Consciousness is a concept 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 Consciousness as a fundamental metaphysical reality. I remain the same person if I am conscious of being so, even though my body should change drastically and be diminished through amputations. Logically, it is possible that I should remain the same person although I am altogether disembodied persons. Therefore, persons are indivisible. non corporeal simple entities it is because it becomes difficult here to distinguish persons so constituted from metaphysical self that is transcendental ego spirit mental substance soul and other similar immaterial substances however the concept of persons does not fit into these entities because persons are if anything concrete beings in the world one can ascribe consciousness to others only if one can identify other subject of experience in addition 
one cannot identify other subject if one can identify them only as subject of experience. Possessor of state of consciousness, the latter must have concrete ex existence in the world. If we are too obsessed with the inner criteria, we shall be tempted to treat persons as essentially as minds. However, admitting outer criteria does not mean that there are no state of consciousness. We should claim that some pre predicates refer to the occurrence of state of consciousness. The persons are uncertainly identical beings having the life of their own. They are not definitely Cartesian egos, rather, they possess mixed bag of M predicates and P predicates. Persons are in any case conscious individual who can be ascribed a larger number of predicates such as thinking, feeling, willing, deciding, etc. These conscious states, according to Saul, are intentional, that is, are of something and it stands for something and those intentionality which we have explained already. That is, they are di directed to something outside them. Thus, persons have these conscious states are intentional and mental beings. Again, only a being that could have conscious intentional states could have intentionality at all. And so, every unconscious intentional state is at least potentially consciousness, potentially conscious. This thesis has enormous consequence for the study of the mind, but there is a conceptual connection between consciousness and intentionality that has the consequences that a complete theory of intentionality requires an account of consciousness. And our consciousness is of consciousness of something. Thus, persons have the essential features of consciousness. There is an interconnection between persons, mind and consciousness. Empirically, there is a distinction among them, but transcendentally, they point in the same directions. It is right to say that a person is a mental being and the essence of mind is consciousness. Therefore, the concept of mind and the persons and the consciousness go together. Thus, consciousness is related to mind which also belongs to a person. Therefore, in this way consciousness, mind and person goes together. Now, we have to see the dual nature of persons. Why there is a dual nature? Because as we have seen from the Evonim Cartesian view and then in the Strasson view also there is also dualism also is there. The problem of person has traditionally been raised in a dualistic context. It has been greatly influenced those who have discussed by the picture of a person as composed of two entities, body and mind, which are contingently related to each other. The person substance are not merely a set of properties, physical or mental, because they are not fully exhausted in their existence. The description of the persons as having such and such properties are complete, still presupposes that there are persons as having those properties. According to Strassens, the properties like being at such and such time and place, having such and such weight, color and so on are M predicate. The other properties are psychological properties like being in the state of happiness, being in the state of pain and so on are the state of P predicates. In his way, Strassens has rightly said the concept of persons is to be understood as the concept of type of entities such that both predicates ascribing corporeal characteristics, a physical situation and consciousness are equally applicable to an individual entities of that type. Strassen has pointed out that the co-applicability to the same person's substance, the M predicates cannot be ascribable independently because of that prohibits them from being ascribable to the conscious beings like M predicates. The P predicates cannot be ascribed to the material bodies. This is because combination of distinct kind of substance that has both physical and mental properties without being reducible to each other. The above argument shows that Strassen's consider persons as non-material and non-dual without rejecting Cartesian dualism. This is because Descartes held that 
when we are on the concept of persons we are really referring to one or both of two distinct substances of different types each of which has its own appropriate type of states and properties and none of the states belongs to both that is to say that state of consciousness belong to one of the substance and to the other Descartes has given a sharp focus on this dualistic concept of persons it is not easy to get away from dualism because persons have both sort of attributes such as mental and physical according to dualistic conceptions a person is something altogether distinct from body that is person is not identical with his body some dualists however believe that person is a composite entity one part of which is its body and another part of which is something immaterial spirit or soul the dualism essentially adheres to the mind body distinctions and persons as mental beings are distinct from material bodies according to descartes the self of a person is something altogether distinct from its body so the self is altogether non physical lacking in all physical characteristics whatever on this interpretations we can say that person is an immaterial substance a spirit or a soul which stands in special relation to certain physical body which is its body descartes think that a person is some sort of combination of an immaterial soul and a physical body which stand to one another in a rather mysterious relation of substantial there is one kind of substantial union uh, in both the body and the mind but cartesian dualism does not maintain that a person is immaterial stuff on the contrary it maintains that a person is a combination of body and mind in fact our bodies and we are utterly unlike one another in respect to the sort of properties that we possess our bodies have special extensions and a location in physical space whereas we have no such qualities on the other hand we have thought and feelings states of consciousness whereas our bodies are known to have qualities other than these but the question arises should a person not simply be identified with a certain physical body as william has argued stresson gives an answer to the above questions he says that mental states such as thoughts feeling seems not to be properly attributed to something like a body but only to a person one is inclined to or that it is i who thinks and feels not my body even if i need to have a body to be able to think and feel however if a person is composed if of body but not identical with it then it seems that every part of the body must be a part of the person but not every part of the person can be the part of the body so one of the plausible assumption is that a person has a parts which are not part of the body and so it is not identical with the body by saying this we are denying that a person is composed of body all that is meant is that persons have both bodily and mental existence persons are not purely a disembodied spirit but if you see one of the most important thinkers in the philosophy of mind is aj ayer and he, he says that the relationship between consciousness and the uh, subject to which is attributed is a contingent relations according to him a person is not a purely immaterial stuff or immaterial subject it is a rather an embodied person to which mental attributes are causally ascribable he accept a causal relation between the person and his body therefore according to him there is no contradiction in holding that a person's body would have been inhabited by another person stresson says that he rejects the idea of causal relation to other according to him persons are more primitive than their mind and body that is persons are primary than whereas mind and body are secondary because for him the concept of person is a primitive concept and this primitiveness of the person gives one kind of 
distinctness in Strassonian concept of mind or persons. In the case of persons, both mind and body is ascribable, but not in the case of mind and body. Now, we have to see persons as individual. John Locke says that the concept of person is something like forensic or something, but the Strassen says that the concept of person is something primitive concept. Locke wishes of the persons while it raises philosophical problems of its own, perhaps it is less desk. It is because of that there is a one kind of dispute in both the explanations. Especially in the Lockean explanations, says that the concept of person is forensic concept, but Strassen's concept is person is metaphysical concept like the concept of the self and therefore, is not merely social or forensic concept. Pradhan points out that uh, it is a metaphysical concept of persons, because it shows that how it can be used to describe the minded being as the unique substance, which is not identical with the body, though it is necessarily linked with the body. That is to say that persons have material bodies and yet they are not on the same level as the physical bodies or organism. Persons therefore, are not physical things at all that is because persons are transcendental their physical existence. Therefore, persons are transcendental being. The transcendental qualities however, show that persons are explainable from the first person perspective the first person perspective are unique individual that is an I who experience. As Woodbinstein point out that even it is the name which can substitute I therefore, the first person is not the description of any human beings, because it refers to the third person perspective, but it refers to the person himself or herself. This does not mean that person is distinct from this world, but person is a part of this world. As Strassonian persons to begin with is to be understood as distinct from a mere material body, which retains the contrast customarily observed between person and things. According to Strassons, each of us distinguishes between himself and the state of himself on the other hand and what is not himself or state of himself on the other hand. Then the question is what are the conditions of our making this distinction? Why do we make it in the way we do? Strassens argues that in our conceptual scheme, material bodies are basic properties. This means that material bodies could be identified without referring to another individual in particular, whereas the identification and re-identification of particulars of other categories rest ultimately on the identification of material bodies. Then Strasson inquiries whether we could make intelligible to ourselves a conceptual scheme in which material bodies are not basic. This leads him to the construction of the model no space world in which all the sensory items are auditory, but in which it did seem possible to find a place for idea of re-identifiable particulars by exploiting certain auditory analogues of the idea of special substance. The requirements was for a scheme in which a distinction was made between oneself and not on self, oneself. Let us now think of some ways in which we ordinarily talk of ourselves, certain things which we do and which are ordinarily ascribed to ourselves. We ascribe ourselves as intentions sensations and feeling, perceptions and memories also. We ascribe ourselves locations and attitudes. Of course, not only we ascribe ourselves temporarily conditions like state situations, but also enduring characters including physical characteristics like height, shape, weight. That is to say that those among the thing that we ascribe to ourselves are those that we ascribe to material bodies, but there are things and attributes that we ascribe to ourselves, but cannot dream of ascribing to material bodies. Let us take a visual experience. First, there is a group of empirical facts of which the most familiar of their is the eyes of that body are closed, 
the person sees nothing. To this group belong all the facts known to the athletic surgeons. Secondly, there is the fact that falls within the field of vision at any moment of depending part of the orientation of this eyes. That is, the direction his head is turned in and on the orientation of his eyeball in the sockets. Thirdly, there is the fact that where he sees from what his possible field of vision at any moment, it depends on the body. But Strasson divides these facts into the group to emphasize in the following. The fact that visual experience in all the, these, these three ways depends on the fact about the body or bodies. It is a contingent fact that it is same body. Each person's body occupies a special position in relation to that person's perceptual experience. For each person, there is one body occupies certain causal position in relation to the that person's perceptual experiences. For Strassens, a person's body occupies an important position in a person's experience, so that he could answer to the following questions satisfactorily. Firstly, why are one state of consciousness ascribed to anything at all? And why are they are ascribed to the same thing as certain corporeal characteristics? For the Cartesian, this question does not arise, it is only a linguistic illusion that both kind of predicates are uh, properly ascribed to one and the same thing, that there are is a common owner or subject. Descartes say that when we speak of a person, we refer to two distinct substances. The state of consciousness belongs to one, those of the substance and uh, not to other. Strasson says that he escapes one of our questions, but he does not escape the other. Why is that because state of consciousness ascribed to anything at all. In order to overcome above problems, Strassens used the concept of persons as a primitive concept. Then he said, what I mean by the concept of person is the concept of type of entity such that both predicates ascribing state of consciousness and predicate ascribing corporeal character, physical situation and C and are equally applicable to a single type. Why he is saying that? It is because the, the concept of person is a one kind of primitive concept. Uh, now, we can get answer to the above questions which Descartes raised, but Strasson said that the answer to these two questions are connected in this manner. That is a necessary condition of state of consciousness are ascribed at all is that they should be ascribed to the very same thing as certain corporeal characteristics, a certain physical situation and see. That is to say, stand up a consciousness could not be ascribed at all, whereas they were ascribed to persons. In that sense, I have claimed for this world. Above Strasson's view says that a necessary condition of a state of consciousness being ascribed at all is that they should be ascribed to persons. The concept of person is prior to that of a, an individual consciousness. A person is not an embodied ego, but an ego might be a disembodied person. Again, Strasson points out that one can ascribe a state of consciousness to others only if one can identify other subject of experience. In addition, one cannot identify others if one can identify them only as subject of experience of state of consciousness. He says that this way will lead to Cartesianism, we cannot but refer to the bodies of others. So, state of consciousness could not be ascribed at all, unless they are ascribed to an individual person who has a body. So, the pure individual persons or consciousness in the sense of pure ego is a concept that cannot exist. Strasson says that it can exist only as a secondary non-primitive concept but can be analyzed in terms of concept of persons. The pure individual consciousness cannot exist as a primary concept to be used in the explanation of the concept of persons, but it might have logically secondary existence. From within our conceptual scheme, each of us conceives of his or her individual survival of bodily death. One has to think of oneself as 
having thought memories in a disembodied state. But this disembodied state is only a secondary concept because cannot but think a person as embodied beings. According to Sturson's, a person is not an embodied ego, but an ego might be a disembodied person. Retaining the logical benefits of, of individual from having been a person. As you have seen, there are two kinds of predicates properly applied to individuals of this type. The first kind of predicate consists of those that are also properly applied to material bodies to which we do not ascribe state of consciousness, which he calls M predicate. The second type consists of those predicates such as thinking hard, believing in God, which he calls P predicates. Therefore, Sturson says that the concept of person is to be understood as the concept of type of a entity such that both predicate ascribing state of consciousness and those ascribing state of corporeal characteristics that is M predicates are equally applicable to an individual entity. Then he said that the concept of persons is to be understood as the concept of type of entities such that both predicate ascribing state of consciousness and predicates ascribing corporate characteristics a physical situation and C are ap equally applicable to an individual of that entities of that type. Uh, Strasson is not taking the concept of person as a secondary concept in the relation to two primary kinds that all particular consciousness and a human body. Strasson says that though not all P predicates are what we should call predicates ascribing state of consciousness that is going for a walk and, and many other things, they may be said to have this in common that they are imply the position of consciousness on the part of that to which they are ascribed. From the above stand point, what Strasson want to say is that one ascribe pre predicates to others on the strength of observation of their behavior and that behavior criteria one goes on a on are not just signs of the presence of what is meant by the P predicates, but are criteria one goes and are not just signs of presence of that that is meant by P predicates, but are criteria of a logical adequate that kind of ascriptions of the P predicates. This claim shows that persons is immaterial because of state of consciousness is applicable to persons. This is because there are predicates which could not be self ascribable and other ascribable to the same individual, but there are remains many cases in which one has an entirely adequate basis for ascribing P predicates to oneself and yet this basis is distinct from those one which one ascribe the predicates to another. In other words, these predicates have the same meaning and both ways of ascription is in perfect individual. That is why P predicates have certain characteristics such as I am in pain, I am depressed and etcetera and one should not ascribe to some body from these observation because this is less to third person perspective of the concept of persons. Moreover, the above explanation begs an important question that is how can one ascribe to oneself not on the basis of observations the very same thing that others may have on the basis of observations reasons of a logically adequate kind of ascribing one which might be phrased. Sturson says that the above questions may be observed in a wider one which might be phrased. The questions are how are P predicates possible and how is the concept of persons is possible. Sturson says that these two questions are replacing those two earlier questions that are why are one state of consciousness ascribed to anything at all and why are they ascribed to the same thing as certain corporeal characteristics. The answer to these two questions are inherited in the primitiveness of the concept of person. This is because the uniqueness characters of P predicates because he or she who is an individual have the P predicates. Uh, the attributes of P predicates that make a person is an individual. The persons are metaphysical beings 
claims an ontological reality in the sense uh, they could not be what they are without metaphysical essence. Therefore, this is the essence about the uh, concept of persons according to Strassens. Uh, Strassen has been explaining the metaphysical point of view on persons. Uh, thank you.